Now in the last video I went over default and parameterized constructors. I'm sorry, parameterized. Ugh, I need to spell properly. Parameterized. Now in this video what I want to do is I want to sort of we can say differentiate between them. Now a default constructor as you know no parameters and I'm just gonna fill up one part and what you guys have to do for homework is fill up the second takes no parameters now a default constructor is inserted by the compiler basically when you when you don't write a constructor Java or BlueJ, both Java and BlueJ, insert a constructor for you, and it's a default constructor which takes no parameters, and it initializes all your instance variables to their default value. So if you have let's say an integer which is an instance variable, it'll initialize an int to zero, and I'll go over default values later on and instance variables. now that's that's about it for the difference between default and parameterized i can't think of anything as of now if something comes to my head then i'll go back to it now exactly now what i'm going to discuss now is some a, a concept and I, I i won't call it a concept but it's it's an idea it's an abstract idea of what a what an object is and i know that i keep going back to this same same thing about an object and a constructor but that that should make you understand how important this is as a topic in computer science in general forget the icsc java curriculum in computer science in general you should understand how important an object is because i have spent literally the last three videos just discussing objects uh, three or four I, I don't know what it is but you need to understand that objects need to be you need to have that concept clear of what an object is why is it different from a method or a class or anything like that and in your head once you have that in your head you can think about object oriented programming the way it's supposed to be thought about and these are some some of these things you won't know essentially in essence by only studying the ICSC curriculum so this will help you at some point of time or the other in grasping the topics now think of let's say think of a very general idea food we all love food I love food I can't live without food but the thing is when I eat food sometimes I'm in the mood to eat Indian Sometimes in, I'm in the mood to eat Italian, sometimes Chinese, sometimes European. Let's just leave it at that for now. Now, when I eat food, sometimes when I feel like eating Indian, I can feel like eating, let's say, I don't know, a kebab. I'm a vegetarian, so not much choice there. Or maybe I can feel like eating, I don't know, a roti. Of course, with sabzi. So, now what happens here? I can eat this, I can eat this. Now, Indian is a type of food, right? and roti is one kind of Indian food now I can do the same thing with Italian and let's say pizza sometimes I feel like eating pizza sometimes it's pasta now let me bring this example into Java what I just told you if you can think of as a class let's say 
food is your class now let's say italian is it is is a food i know the english is not correct but i'm stressing on this is all right here so italian is a kind of food so what if i had a class called italian and we know i have already mentioned that this is a kind of this so food becomes a more abstract a more generalized a more generalized form of italian food so italian food is the most specific form which is in java this can be called a sub class and this food can be called a super class and this relationship of a sub class and a super class fundamentally the concept is called inheritance now italian food can inherit some properties of food in general and can have its own properties like italian food generally is pretty saucy i mean that that's the kind of italian food i eat red sauce white sauce pasta pizza i love all that but anyway and that's not true for all food you can have a lot of dry food so italian food is more specific it's a sub class so this is why you would use inheritance because instead of having a class food and i have an object of that class food called food italian why don't i have a more specific sub class called italian and let's say from this italian sub class i can make something even more beautiful let's say i have a another sub class called pizza which has its own set of specific well values or you know a pizza can be round 8 inches 12 inches large small different toppings it becomes even more specific it's a more specific form of italian food so this relationship of inheritance we can summarize it by saying pizza is a italian is a food therefore pizza is a food and though this may look taunting and confusing right now once you understand the concept of inheritance why it's useful you will see how powerful it is and mind you in java a class can only inherit from one other class it cannot inherit so you can't say that uh, a pizza is a kind of italian food and pizza is also a kind of bread pizza can only inherit from one and essentially i hope you've understood the concept of a more specific sub class and the concept of a more abstract super class now italian food can have another sub class it can have a sub class called pasta and pasta is very different from pizza and pasta can have its own objects like in pasta you have uh, you have um, penne you have arabiata so it gets even more and more specific so you can create these webs of inheritance structures and you can see how beautiful they become how large and convoluted they become to some extent and that is why java is an object oriented programming language inheritance is one of the principles of object oriented programming language and i wanted to introduce you to that and i hope you've been able to comprehend this video if you haven't don't worry if you have give yourself a pat on the back you have achieved something and in the next video i'll delve into all this a little more and i hope you guys like this video i really liked explaining the concept and have a good night guys see you